Bush is on his world tour right now. First up was France. Did you see Bush and Chirac on TV? That meeting was kind of uncomfortable, you know? They had that thing like, what, do you get drunk and like wind them in bed together? <laughs> they had that vibe, you know? It's like, hey, I guess I went a little crazy with the France and Cowley Nation thing. You know? <laughs> Me too, I shouldn't have said America's the biggest terrorist. You know, let's just forget it and then keep it between us. Yeah, all right. <laughs> now, one of the other stories that this week that epitomizes everything that's insane about our country is the lawsuit in Florida where a woman's suing the state because they won't let her take a driver's license picture while wearing a veil. The ACLU, of course, took this case. But this is the kind of story that everybody loves. The right loves it because they figure it shows the lack of assimilation of immigrants. The left loves it, loves it because it feeds their delusion that there's some fascist John Ashcroft Patriot Act depression happening. Just as a few southern radio morning guys uh, tried to fill the hour when the stripper canceled and, you know, they'd... Uh, how did everyone burn the Dixie Check CDs? I don't know. And you know what? Nobody takes a good picture on the license, okay? Bite the bullet, honey. Uh, <laughs> And guess what? Surprise, she's an American who converted to Islam. Now, if you're Muslim, I respect that. If you converted to Islam, I respect that. But if you converted after 9-11, don't act like you weren't sending a message out, okay? <laughs> Let me see your license. That's all I'm trying to Folks, I think these might be, I shouldn't say this in front of the crowd, they don't have any. Black and white Malamars, I've never seen such a thing. If this really is true, this is a big moment, folks. Bigger than anything that's going on in the world right now. Black and white Malamars. Okay, look. I really am like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> no, you're not. She's, Maybe they'll send me some nice... Uh... No, you're not. She's famous. <laughs> All right, a Florida woman is suing the state, claiming she has the right to cover her driver's license photo, citing religious law. Should we let this woman wear a veil for her driver's license, Greg? Uh, maybe we can compromise. Maybe we let her wear the veil in the picture, but then her driver's license is only good for flying carpets. <laughs> That's a compromise? Why the hell not? No, you know, it's, it's absurd. The whole thing is it's absolutely absurd. People act like, uh, you know, religious freedom is not, it's not an absolute right. You have to, you have to weigh that against legitimate government interests like identifying its people which you can't do with a picture that looks like a pile of laundry with eyes I, just, I feel sorry for the cops that have to pull her over you know first they got to deal with her smell and then <laughs> then they got to guess who she is you know how about this one maurice a massachusetts house republican has suggested a bill that would ban citizens of Cuba, any Iranian, Iraqi, Syria, North Korea, Libya, Sudan from attending public college in, in Massachusetts unless they disavow their homeland and, and, you know, and say they're American. Which, of course, you know, in college, if you disavow a terrorist state, a lot of professors will fail you for that. But, um, <laughs> Maurice, what do you think about this kind of nonsense? You didn't go to college, did you? <laughs> A year. Well, give me a break. It's not like I'm walking up here with my PhD. I went, uh, uh, I went for a year and a half. That's and what enough. happened? That's enough. That's about how long I went for. <laughs> how did it end? Ugly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come, yeah. Peeking through a window. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Should we let people like that be, uh, you know, allowed into the colleges or what? Yeah, if they bring the right, uh, the right amount of weed. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, they, they can stay in school if they become U.S. citizens? If they disavow their terrorist state, whatever. And become U.S. citizens. Right. That's, oh, that, well, that's brilliant, because then they can just change the state from Massachusetts to Massa Mecca. <laughs> you know, I think we should, uh, you know, we should let the, them come over to study. You keep your enemies close, right? I mean, you know, hatred comes from fear, and if these people can come over to our schools and see that all we really want to do is get drunk and play video games all day, <laughs> you know, there, there's nothing to be afraid of, just don't bomb us and we'll leave you alone. Okay. And, and plus, if we don't let them go to the schools, they don't graduate, who's going to open up all the convenience stores around here? No, <laughs> well, excuse me. I think we all know if they don't come over and do that. I know. Ooh. You know what? <laughs> it's you, baby. I know. Well, she didn't finish high school, did you? Be honest. <laughs> I'm not joking. Did you finish high school? No, I quit. That's what I thought. Yeah, I quit. I'm not saying that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I got my GED. Oh. 
You didn't even take the GED, did you? Yes, I did. Did you really? No. How old were you, like 37? <laughs> you didn't. You're on the show, you don't have a high school diploma. I do have a diploma. Tell them what you did in school. I didn't say... What did you do in school? What did I do in school? I... I, I you, sold... I'll tell you exactly. Uh, I told you your mistake on the first, one of the first shows. You could have hung out. You were Jewish. But you were too dumb to hang out with the Jews, so you hung out with the Italians in a leather jacket and smoked in the corner. And then when they all left, the Italians got the union jobs, the Jews went to college, and you were left with nothing. I was nothing. <laughs> I know. We all make mistakes in life, folks. I think that's the point. I had a really big business when I got, uh, got out of school. Well, I had a painting business. It just didn't work because I was scared to climb ladders. <laughs> <laughs> I only would paint one-story houses. <laughs> I got greedy. <laughs> well, I think the crowd, like, we all laughed for the same reason the first one was like, half like pitying, like, that must be his first joke from when he started comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a joke from the 60s. I know, but with him sitting next to me, I'm getting flashbacks. You gonna let him go like that, Maurice? I'll let him go. Come on. You gotta feel sorry for the handicap. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How is he on the show? How bad are Patrice and Keith doing on this show? <laughs> Uh, I've never seen you this calm. Are you on like Paxil? What's going on, man? <laughs> Let this son of a bitch have it. He's really going. I'm just trying to be nice. I yeah, I'll get him later. It doesn't suit you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know. Nice is not your long suit. Your long suit. Right. He's just amazed to be in a building with electricity that works. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would think two guys with the same teeth would get along. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but mines are real. <laughs> mines are real. <laughs> mines are real. Uh, anyway. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Hey. You go and do that thing we talked about. I'm going to stay here with these people. We'll be right back. Mike Tyson's back in the news for talking about the rape conviction. He told a Fox reporter, I hate her guts. I really wish I did it now. I really do want to rape her. Mike, whether you're right or wrong, and maybe, she, maybe you were falsely convicted, but you have to let things go. Look what happened to me. On Saturday, I got bit by a dog. You know, it's to be going out trying to rape a dog in revenge, right? And that's not to say I haven't thought about it, but Mike, I keep it to myself, and my advice is to you is to let it... Mike, you know what? You don't take advice. My orders to you are let it go, Mike. What's up? What's up, Mike? Let it go. Ha <laughs> ha. I need to sit in there watching. Listen to this white boy. Mike, don't call me white boy, first of all. I'm asking you nicely. But we travel in more or less the same circles, and if I see you in the club, it might not be so nice the next time. That sounded cool, the uppercut with the mic. Um, Mike, the point is this, Mike. Is this Maurice? Mike, Maurice, Maurice, Mike, is this, uh, is this, is this just more of Mike's antics or is this something more serious, Maurice? I think it's serious, man. If he does do it, man, he should lock his crazy ass back up again. I mean, she must got some good stuff, man, for him to go back to jail over it. Oh, my I mean, Lord. Wow. <laughs> that was really the most chilling thing anyone's ever said on I understand I mean, it. I mean, think about it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to punch, you, Mike Tyson, you can't even beat Sisley Tyson, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and he was serious about that. I know, like he's gonna Yeah. <laughs> you know, I came into comedy so I could say my serious opinions. But I was gonna fight Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, shut <laughs> your trap. You know what? That that, uh, that Mike Tyson is a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. You know what? I think it's crazy. I mean, he's crazy. Of course, he's crazy. But you know, the guy he makes his living by punching people in the face until they fall down. Yeah. And, you like to see that those guys are a little nuts. I don't trust the guys like the, the Jesus freak boxers, like the Evander Holyfield, who are like, you know, they, after the fight, they're thanking God for pummeling the guy one step closer to Parkinson's, you know? Uh, yeah, but, I mean, but he's just bitter. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, what do they say? You do the crime, you gotta be prepared to do the time. He wasn't prepared. Now, if he rapes her again, he'll be prepared. <laughs> He also said, he also said, he not only wants to rape her, he wants to rape her mother. <laughs> I'm serious, have you seen her mother? <laughs> I'd rather rape the cat. Rich, rape is a crime of violence, not of sex. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, lady. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll tell you, if that was 1992, we're going to standing O. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was 1992. We'd all be there. Yeah. All right, look. Um, <laughs> do any of you guys think he might have been innocent? Oh, he could have been innocent. Who knows? The way he said that, you never know, right? If he was really it, as innocent, why wouldn't he just, you know, work hard like O.J. and find the guy who really did it? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, look. Two convicted death row inmates are requesting death by a firing squad. Utah's one of the three states which still allows this. Now, I think they should not allow them to pick the... It should be up to the family. You know what I mean? What do you think about this, uh, whoever? Mine? It's, oh, they're, requesting, you know, they're requesting a firing squad? I mean, it, yeah. instead of the meal, they want to, the firing squad? <laughs> no, instead of the uh, chair. You know what, I think you got to take into consideration what they did, right? One guy, he was a white supremacist, and he killed a black guy. And then the other guy raped and killed three teenage girls. So if they really want a firing squad, I say fine, but give them the firing squad they deserve. Not, no sharpshooters. Yeah. No, no, honestly, the, black guy, the guy who killed the black guy, he should, get, uh, he should get Ray Charles, Muhammad Ali, and Richard Pryor. That's a good squad for him. And the one who killed the teenagers, you know, I think the Olsen twins coming off an ex ecstasy trip, you know. And if it takes all afternoon, then we'll hang in there, we'll watch it. That's very interesting. So, Are you all in? You, you could choose. That's the amazing thing to me. Why do they, why do we allow them to choose yeah. how they're executed? I mean, you know, maybe you want to be uh, you know smothered under a pile of strippers, but yeah. you know you, you, you know you're a serial killer, so you take what we give you. Yeah, well, they they're making a, a point. Choose, they're trying you know? to make a point. You know, the brutality yeah. of capital punishment. But they have no balls. If they have balls, they ask for a crucifixion. I say. You know? No, seriously, that makes a big statement. People are still talking about that today. <laughs> I say you throw them all on an island and watch them kill each other and like, like the last prisoner standing and have maybe Jay Moore host it. <laughs> Good publicity. <laughs> Try to pump the show. Uh, you know what the worst part of that awful pump was? That you're going to actually go to Jay and go, this year I pumped the show. <laughs> Shut up. Yes, you are. He won't, yes, you are. He won't yes, answer you. my calls. <laughs> you know, if, if they do do the shooting, uh, the firing squad though, they, they definitely can't give them that last cigarette, you know, when they're like handcuffed behind their back and they, somebody lets them smoke that last cigarette. Because from watching old movies, that's always when they escape. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what's good? Do you know what's good that Maurice wore a running suit? Because you know he is going to dash out of here quick as hell when this is over. <laughs> How can we teach economic freedom abroad if we don't even recognize Stay tuned. we got a big uh, expose, undercover expose coming after this. <laughs> You ever like read the paper and you look at it and you go, how did that happen? How did it get to that? So what we're going to start doing is reenactments of things that might have happened in situations in the news and try to figure out the 10 minutes before, okay? <laughs> Incident one, Leonardo DiCaprio is involved in this $45 million lawsuit right now by Elizabeth Berkeley's ex-boyfriend, some guy Roger something who was in a couple of Porky's movies. And in 1998, Leo and him got a little static you know, over uh, Elizabeth, and he claims that Leo had the posse. Leo's posse kick his ass outside of Asia to Cuba, which is like a hot club at that time. All right? So it's 1998. I'm, I understand the, you know, you say, what goes on in these trendy clubs? I've been there, folks. Believe me, I've been there and back. And uh, so we're going to reenact what probably went down that night 10 minutes before. <laughs> Yo, then check this out. Then this fool gonna tell me it's a Titanic, you gotta go in the water. I'm like, whatever, you the director. But if you're gonna do the CLE9 thing, I got Q-tip waiting with some fat beats. Yo, David Blaine, sup? Ooh, ooh. What's up, baby? I'm just kicking it, man, you know what I'm saying. Who this? Oh man, this is Kobe Maguire. Homeboy's one of these um small movie but respected in the industry types, but he down. What's up? Up. And you know my bodyguard, right? I mean, we're talking about back in the day. I mean, me and him done been together since PT, pre-Titanic. I'm talking like living where you don't know where your next meal is coming from because the catering truck moved to the next location too early. <laughs> Yo, how long I know... I'm sorry, man, I forgot your name. Big man, big man. Big man, all right. Nah, no catering truck? Shut up. 
You sign a house rules. Nobody know who you are. Pick a card. <laughs> Yo, that's Elizabeth Berkeley, son. Yo, big man, you know I've been loving that girl since Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Ask her if she wants a drink and tell her to bring that her boyfriend with her. All right, I got this. <laughs> no, no. You, you know that guy that uh, bent that spoon? Yeah. That's a trick. I can do that for you. <laughs> nah. Yo, she was like, she was like, all right, but her man was like, hell no. No. Yo, you see the way she diss you, son? That boy is trifling. Nah. Yo, let me get that nine up. Big man, I'm gonna take care of business. Yo, it ain't worth it, Leo. It ain't worth it. Yo, but I need her. I love her. You know how we do. Hi, Leo. Hi, Elizabeth. This is my boyfriend, Roger. Sup? 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 Come on, Elizabeth. Let's get out of here. Yo, chill. 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 Elizabeth, why don't you stay here and chill with us? Yeah? Nah. Yeah. Yo, we're going back to a trust fund girl's house. It's going to be a bunch of models watching me beat Toby and David at NBA PlayStation. Then get to see who gets to be with me and who's got sloppy sex with David and Toby. Yo, man, why are you trying to play me like that? Yo, excuse you? Yo, kick his ass, man. Kick his ass back to police academy. Porkies. Smoke this fool, Leo. Who are you? You ever seen the ice storm? No. Yo, whatever, Trevor. Yo, give me my nine. I'm fixing to teach this boy a lesson. Yo, let me do this. Let me do this. Nah, man, I got beef with him, not you. Yo, I, I'll blow him up. Nah, please, you can't get in trouble. Yo, with the publicity for the movie and all that, you know what I'm saying? All right, this time you do it. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, I, I can sit on a block of ice for three days. So what? Did you ever see Cider House? No. <laughs> Yo, I'm king of the world. Well, no one's really sure what happened next. <laughs> but what is sure is that Liz Berkeley's boyfriend did get his ass kicked, and somebody should probably throw him a few bucks for that, you know? Because he's in the Porky's movies. They're all doing well. David Blaine's, we eagerly wait his next amazing stunt. Tobey Maguire went on to be Spider-Man. Elizabeth Berkeley is now doing the independent films that Tobey was doing. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> the world keeps turning. We'll be right back. The art of the written word is down. It doesn't mean anything anymore in this country. And that's bad news for the nation's personal ads. We asked our experts to write a personal ad describing themselves and what they're looking for. We will start with Greg Geraldo. Rapidly deteriorating married male. So burned out that his once fit body is morphing into a gelatinous bag of goo. <laughs> Seeks non-smoker with time machine. Must be, must be willing to take me back to 1996 and convince me that when you get a big network development deal, it's a real good idea to start taking some acting classes. <laughs> Unless you want to end up seven years later on a basic cable show watched by 400 people. <laughs> I say that out of love. I say it out of love. It's not... Close your <laughs> love me, love me. Oh God, somebody please love me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm needy. Who did you think you were going to meet on the internet? A self-assured Victoria's Secret model? <laughs> Maybe you'd like to hear about my boobs. I've got two of them. <laughs> Do I like long walks on the beach? No, I like sex on the beach with a person instead of this covert plea for cyber sex, which, let's be honest, is really what you want. So I'll do you a favor. Want to know what I look like? Turn to page 157 of the June issue of FHM. I kind of look like her, but with a different face and body. <laughs> and to the burning question, would I be into a threesome? Yeah, as long as it's with you and your dad. Oh, <laughs> all right. More money. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Maurice. <laughs> if you're not allergic to duct tape, you're the girl for me. <laughs> if you can chew through rope and yell for help, you're not the girl for me. <laughs> I want a good listener. Someone who takes directions well. Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> I want to be that type of guy that you can talk to your mom about. Who gave him my number? <laughs> Choose me. Oh, I'll choose you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rich Boss. All right, a little bit about me. 
I am selfish, self-centered, inconsiderate, show no affection. I am broke, have no credit, in therapy, been on Paxil for two years, a little bit below average in bed. I'm looking for a really hot, wealthy type dame, must have two cars in case I need to get away for a while. Does not like to be held after sex and does not mind if I sleep with your best friend. Please, no codependence. Ah, oh, good. Brutal honesty. Um, I don't need the monitor right now. I need a, uh, I'm a comedian looking for a woman who's in my business, in show business. Uh, not an actor or writer, just a, a really good editor. Um, <laughs> I've got to meet her by, in the next two hours before, <laughs> hopefully before 11.30 tonight when the show gets on the air. <laughs> She's got to really know how to cut and paste and chop, and you know what I mean? <laughs> That's all I want. And uh, just remember something. With dating, if at first you don't succeed with dating, if at first you don't succeed, try an escort service. Good night.